It often seems that nothing can scare archaeologists. They saw the remains of eerie rituals, mass graves of people and terrible artifacts of antiquity. However, the discovery of a bunker in Japan made archaeologists reconsider their fears and think about choosing a new profession. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. The Face and Phallus of the Ancient Romans we raised the anchors and set off for Spain, where archaeologists from the University of Alicante made an amazing discovery. They found an ancient carving on a rock with images of a face, a cornucopia, and believe it or not, a phallus. This discovery was made in the castle of Tossel de la Cala. Imagine, this carving hiding on the rocks has been living for about 2000 years. In those ancient times, around 8072 BC, the area was a Roman fort where the Roman Romans defended themselves in a civil war. This mysterious stone depicts a human face next to which a phallus and a cornucopia are carved. The carving is quite large, about 57 by 42 centimeters, but it appears to be incomplete because the top is missing. Why was it created, you may ask? It could be ancient graffiti or some sort of ritual symbol. The phallus for the Romans was a symbol of masculine strength and the security of the state, so its presence speaks of a certain protective function of the carving. And the cornucopia, which is also depicted there, is often associated with the Roman deities of harvest and prosperity. Let us recall the myth of Hercules, who plucked the horn from the river god Achilles and turned it into a cornucopia. So it is possible that this mystical carving depicts a god or goddess representing abundance. But this is only one of the versions. But you can write your opinion in the comments on this matter. Why do you think the phallus was depicted next to the face in ancient Rome? Did the Romans really believe that such a carving would help secure the state? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The oldest inscription in Cyrillic. Imagine you are digging in the ground and you come across something very, very old. What would you do? But the scientists, who recently worked in the ruins of a fortress in Bulgaria, were simply delighted. They found a breastplate that is over 1,100 years old. Can you imagine how many years ago that was? And what's especially interesting is that the breastplate has an inscription on it, and it may be the oldest example of Cyrillic, one of the written alphabets we use today. This inscription is engraved on a lead plate. I think someone wore it on their chest to ward off all troubles and evil. This inscription mentions two people, Pavel and Dmitr. Who they are, no one knows for sure. Perhaps Dmitr served in the fortress and Pavel was his relative. Apparently, this inscription was made during the reign of Tsar Simeon I, who ruled Bulgaria from 893 to 927. Most likely, the plate got into the fortress between 916 and 927. Prior to this, the oldest texts in Cyrillic were those that were written in 921. So this bib is something special. Perhaps scientists will soon learn more about about it. Did you know that the Cyrillic alphabet originated from the Greek alphabet and additional letters were added to it for those sounds that were not in the Greek language? Cyrillic is used in many countries of Eastern Europe as well as in Central and North Asia. It was first adopted in Bulgaria as the official alphabet. Rug drawing of a boat with people Guess what the archaeologists found this time? The answer floats in the waters of time and ancient legends, and now on the walls of a Swedish cave. In Sweden, in a place called Tanum, a real treasury of ancient drawings was discovered right on the stone. I think you will be interested to know that archaeologists have seen more than 40 different drawings on a huge surface 15 meters long. Among them were images of people, horses, chariots, and most interestingly, a large boat with people on board. I think that the ancient artists who inhabited this area about 2700 years ago were very talented. Most likely they were right on the boats when they drew these amazing pictures, because some of them are at high altitude. At that time, this area was the shore of the fjord. And here's another interesting thing. Already a few years ago, thousands of similar rock paintings were discovered in the same region of Sweden, but their age turned out to be even older, as much as 3,700 years. And it looks like the Swedes are not the only ones with such talented artists. In Norway, in the north of the country, archaeologists have found another ancient rock drawing of a 
the boat. Scientists have decided that it is between 10 and 11,000 years old. They believe that this is perhaps the oldest drawing of a boat in Europe and maybe in the whole world. So guys, never forget that art is not just paint and paper. Sometimes it can be a stone and an old boat and even time itself. Church of the Legendary City of Frankhold Ready to go looking for the lost city? And not just a city, but the whole northern Atlantis. Archaeologists have made an amazing discovery in the depth of the North Sea. They found the remains of the ancient city of Frankhold, which was washed away by a powerful storm many centuries ago. And the most interesting thing they found was the stone remains of a huge church measuring 40 by 15 meters. Imagine how majestic it was! Rangholt was a large and important trading city in the Middle Ages. It was a place where thousands of people lived and worked – fishermen, farmers, merchants, and even priests. Imagine the picture. Cozy streets full of people merrily trading and bushing around. Salt and amber were sold there, and goods were even delivered to places as far away as Spain. But alas, it all ended when on January 16, 1362, a terrible storm wiped the city off the face of the earth. Ranghold has since become known as Northern Atlantis. By the way, a historian named Tanya Herman assures that the people in Ranghold were very rich and paid huge taxes. The Danish king Valdemar II even recorded in his books that they paid as much as 20% of their silver as a tax to the king. These were the ancient inhabitants of Ranghold, rich and proud prosperous until their city was swept away by nature. So guys, the next time you think of underwater cities and treasures, think of Frankhold, northern Atlantis, and those who once lived there before the city disappeared into the depths of the sea. Superhighway of the Ancient Maya And now we will go on an adventure straight into the jungles of Guatemala. Archaeologists have been working for the past eight years to uncover the secrets of the ancient Maya civilization. Fasten your seatbelts, we have an exciting flight into the past ahead of us. Remember how you loved to hide in the park among the trees and bushes as a child? But what if someone hid an entire city? This is exactly what scientists have made, using a super cool technology called LIDA. It allows you to see through the jungle, just like you can see through the water in a swimming pool. Archaeologists have found not just one city, they have discovered a network of 400 Mayan cities interconnected by roads. It's like a huge treasure map where all the islands are connected by bridges, and not just roads, but real superhighways. Researchers believe that these superhighways were not only huge, wider than even our widest freeways, but also illuminated by moonlight. Interesting, right? This all thanks to the layer of white placer that covered the road. Can you imagine how cool it was to run along this road under the moonlight? Richard Hansen, lead archaeologist on the study, calls the network the world's first superhighway system. He says that these roads were like a web, connecting all the cities into one big system. While our Mayan friends did not use wheels or paths to get around, it is assumed that they traveled these roads on foot. Can you imagine how they moved from city to city, passing many kilometers along these superhighways? Cursed Table Mystery have you ever been told about items wrapped in sinister secrets and curses? So, around which incredible and mysterious events take place, confusing even the most courageous. In this video, we dive into the history of one such item. Imagine a cafe called the Delta Saloon in Virginia City, Nevada. There, under the glass dome and behind the fence, is an old table. Why a fence and a dome, you may ask? Well, it's not every day you see a cursed table. Yep, that's right, this table is considered cursed. After all, once, about 170 years ago, in the Faro Casino, where the table first appeared, it brought bad luck to everyone who sat down at it. The table seemed to attract trouble, everyone who sat down at it lost all their money. Because of this, it was even sold. The buyer was Black Jake. He moved the table to his house and occasionally hosted poker nights with friends. But the table did not bring him good luck either. A year later, he lost all his savings and committed suicide in desperation. Then the table got to the new owner, David Lips, but even he and his family couldn't escape the table's strange cursed power. In a very tragic way, in one evening, his entire family was found dead at this very table. The table, like a cursed ship, passed from hand to hand, bringing only misfortune and tragedy into 
people's lives. In the end, it was bought by the owner of the Delta Saloon where it still is now. Nowadays, the table decorates the interior of the institution, it is under glass behind a fence so that no one could accidentally touch it. But it wasn't always like that. One day, the new owner, not knowing the whole story, once again set the table for the game and the tragedies continued. Is there a curse or is it just a terrible coincidence? We do not know. But one thing is clear for sure. This table, wrapped in sinister stories, continues to disturb and beckon with its secret. And maybe the curse isn't just a part of our belief in magic and the supernatural. Who knows? Ancient Invoice in Jerusalem Imagine the ancient city of Jerusalem over 2000 years ago. This is the time when the Roman Empire ruled the world. It was here, on the main street of Old Jerusalem, that scientists found an unusual stone. There were strange symbols and words on the stone. It turned out that this is an ancient invoice, a paper receipt of our time. The archaeologists were delighted. After all, this is the first such item from those distant times found right in Jerusalem. Why is it so important? Imagine what secrets this invoice can reveal. It could tell us about how people lived, what they bought, what their customs were. According to Professor Anna Evans, it is a simple object, but it reflects the daily life of the ancient inhabitants of Jerusalem. It is these little things that give us the opportunity to look into the past and see how our distant ancestors lived. This stone tablet was found in an old tunnel dug out in the 19th century. It was carved into a piece of limestone that was once part of an ancient funerary chest called an ossuary. Professor David Cohen, an expert on the history of ancient Jerusalem, says, This find gives us valuable information about the commercial activities and economy of Jerusalem at that time. The names and numbers on the tablet indicate financial transactions, perhaps even modern forms of accounting and trade. Each new find in the city of David helps us to better understand the history of this holy place. Japanese Bunker of Horrors I have an exciting and slightly creepy story that takes place right underground. In mysterious underground bunkers from the Second World War, in these gloomy dungeons, Japanese scientists conducted secret experiments that can only be compared to the scariest horror films. These laboratories of horror were discovered by Chinese archaeologists near the city of Anda. From 1935 to 1945, here, underground, in horrendous conditions, people were infected with deadly diseases and new types of biological weapons were tested on them. Imagine how many secrets these walls hide. It is here, on the ground, that some of the most feared bioweapons were born. The bunkers were built underground to prevent the spread of infections. Interestingly, the data on these experiments were handed over to the US authorities so that scientists could avoid punishment for their deeds. These secrets were used to develop new biological weapons during the Cold War. Archaeologists began exploring the bunkers in 2019 using a variety of techniques, including geophysical exploration, drilling, and excavation. But even so far, they have not reached the depth of the bunkers. Who knows what secrets are still hidden in these terrible dungeons? We will know the answer to this question in the future, when archaeologists get to the most secret corners of these bunkers. 1050-year-old mysterious building Today I will tell you about the Great Ottonian Dynasty, which about a thousand years ago ruled in the area that is now known as Germany. Recall the lessons of history? So, right under our feet, secrets are buried that literally stun us. The Ottons were a powerful family that had roots in Saxony Anhalt and were busy building churches, monasteries, and castles throughout the region. And today, our brave archaeologists are hard at work digging up the earth to bring to light the secrets of this dynasty. And one of these projects in Altenburg Grossbanging has discovered amazing finds. There, on the ground, archaeologists discovered two huge castles, the main one and the outer one, protected by moats and ramparts. These are exactly the same ones that were built during the Etonian dynasty. And here's the most interesting thing. The main castle was protected in a way that we usually don't in the most important castles of that time. It was a separate powerful wall, which is already more than a thousand years old. According to Felix Beerman, the scientist who led the excavations, Altenburg is a real mystery. There is an assumption that they plan to create a new base for management here, but something went wrong. In addition to the wall, archaeologists have found many artifacts. Small houses, stone and clay ovens, ceramics, animal bones, knives, spears, and much more. These were some amazing secrets kept by the land near Altenburg, which is located just 250 kilometers southwest of Berlin. Dr. Parker Dental Show 
Now let's talk about the man who changed the industry. Meet Edgar Randolph Parker, born in 1872 in the small town of Tynemouth Creek, New Brunswick. Edgar, as a child, showed incredible resourcefulness when he decided to become a poultry farmer at the age of nine. Although this plan failed, Edgar did not lose heart. As a teenager, Edgar tried himself as a merchant in various things, but his father was against this idea and sold his wagon. Edgar was so upset that he decided to set sail with his uncle, who owned several ships. But fate brought him to medicine when he was injured and ended up in a hospital in Buenos Aires. Inspired by the work of doctors, he decided to become a dentist. At the age of 17, Edgar entered the New York Dental College and even tried to start a practice, which led to his expulsion from the college. However, Edgar did not give up his dream. He continued to study and ended up graduating from Philadelphia. After becoming the dentist, he traveled to Canada, where to attract clients, he launched an advertising campaign and offered a new service – painless tooth extraction, using his invention Hydrocaine. Edgar soon became an itinerant dentist, pulling teeth without pain. After moving to New York, he met William Beebe, a former circus worker, who offered to organize a theatrical medical show. The show began with a lecture on the importance of oral hygiene, after which Edgar pulled out a tooth from a volunteer without pain. All the spectators were delighted. Soon he had a whole network of offices and an income of $3 million a year. Edgar may have been more of a showman, but he did a lot of good things. He gave free checkups, offered payment by installments, and organized lectures on caring for teeth and gums. That's how one enterprising guy turned dentistry into a real show. Do you want to know more interesting stories from our past and about new finds of archaeologists? Then subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!